Hey everybody, Sam here. And Angela, and welcome to our channel. Welcome back to our bedroom. This is our master bedroom renovation. In part one, or I guess the first video of the series, we made the room look like what it looks like now. <laughs> Which is not very pretty. Right, but it's progress. And in part two, today's video, we are going to... Work on the floor. We're gonna start taking out the floor, which was our primary reason for wanting this renovation in the first place. This is the only floor basically left in the house that has not been redone and had plywood or whatever put down. So we have a little bit of the ruffles chips going on, <laughs> a little wave going on. We do. So before we get started, I wanna show you a little clip of what the floor looks like. It did have some repairs done in the past where somebody put plywood in place, but they also didn't use the same thickness, and so it's kind of bowing a little bit anyway. But you'll be able to see a little bit more of what we have to work with and what we have to get through and bring up. Angela did some work the other day. I, I got a couple of clips here and there, and that is of you doing what with what to whom. I'm going to go ahead and go around the edge of the room with our cordless oscillating tool to cut right up next to the edge of the wall because we're going to have to do that to get this old flooring out. I'm going to take an evening and just go ahead and do the whole thing. It'll make it a lot easier when we come in here to remove the floor. We made sure to get a metal and wood blade, and this one has a coating on the tip of it. Helps it to last just a little bit longer, and it will be good to go through the staples, nails, and the wood, obviously. I went around the whole perimeter of the room, so now it'll be easier and less time consuming today to get moving. There you go. That was your day in a nutshell. It took a long time, but it was easier just to go ahead and sit down and get it done than having to stop what we're doing and wait for a slow process. Yeah, definitely. What we're going to do before we start sawing everything up is we're actually going to clean the floor. We're going to sweep it, get all the debris, dust, junk up so that we don't just end up filling our underbelly of our home full of it. So we got a little cleanup work to do, but then I'm going to start cutting the floor up. For that, I'm going to be using my cordless circular saw. This is a Craftsman brand. It's nothing fancy and amazing, but this guy has been with us for a while. I want to say almost two and a half years has worked great and is my go-to for, I guess, cutting floors. So I've got a brand new blade put in here and I've got the depth set to three quarters of an inch. That will be deep enough to cut through all the flooring, yet not too deep as to damage our floor joists and have any problems that way. So let's get some sweeping done and then we'll start cutting. Not this way, that's not how you cut. That's how you do it. Oh. Are you wanting to do a new bathroom floor? I just tore it. Yeah. Dang it.
It's to this joist if you want to go there. Or I think we're going to have to cut it to this one because it came to like here. It's eight feet. Hmm. Your other hand with the claw. That wasn't so bad. No. I, I feel like you did most of the work. I was there for support, moral support, and throwing stuff out of the way, I guess. Part of it's kind of getting into the hang of what we're doing again. It's been probably right at about a year since, I think it was March, we did the boys' room. So it has been about a year. We're a little bit rusty on the procedure. We had to remember that uh, floor work is terrible and horrible. <laughs> Well, I'm a bit of a klutz, and so when it comes to stomping out the parts, I'm afraid I'm just going to go through the whole floor. I'm going to end up on the ground. <laughs> and I just implore and remember the words of my grandmother, I'm going to stomp a mud hole in you. What? You never heard that? No. Well, you didn't grow up like I did. <laughs> so, wait, 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 wait. If you've heard the phrase, stomp a mud hole in you, let us know down below. Did you, have you heard of it? Yes. Not heard of it? No. No. Let's see. Who's crazy? Me or you? Well, I think we know that. <laughs> Once he stomped and was able to let me not go through the floor, <laughs> the, we were able to get it out easy. Yeah, the initial stomp was to break the residual pieces where the circus saw didn't cut to the wall to allow it to go crooked one way or the other. Seesaw. Yeah, seesaw, to saw the sea, and then go ahead and pry it out with the pry bar. So that seemed to be the best way of doing it. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have tried the sledge of using it but i guess it's more of since your foot is bigger 
it's not going to poke a hole in it like the hammer does. Right, and our goal is to try and remove the floor in as large of pieces as possible. Just less mess down underneath the floor, Definitely. easier to throw away, all that kind of stuff. So our recommendation to you is stomp a mud hole in it or put your foot and just try and get big pieces out seesaw style. <laughs> hey, it works. He went ahead and marked our 48 inch line for our 4x8 sheet of plywood. Mm -hmm. And now we have to go through and measure each little space to find out how big we need of a 2x4 for our blocking. So the plywood that lays on top has a perimeter all the way around it supporting it because that's where the floor totally gives out. You sound like you've done this a time or two. I have. You said that perfectly. Yeah, so for anyone seeing this for the first time, what we're about to show you is what most contractors and DIY repair people who aren't working on their own house don't do. And it's the number one thing you've got to do when you do a floor repair, especially in a mobile home. You got to do it, okay? You have to. If it's a pain. This, yeah, you got to. And it's, oh, uh, because you got to get on the floor to like nail it or screw it in, but. Otherwise, your floor is going to start buckling and giving in the future. Right. This is the one step you cannot skimp on. Skip on other stuff, but not this. Well, let's get our numbers. I got my little piece of paper. We don't have any paper in the house, so I'm using... We ain't got much of anything in the house. <laughs> I'm using a piece of cardboard to write our numbers on so we can just hammer it out. Let's go. Cut it with a saw and put it in with this drill. Yeah. No hammers involved, but whatever. Oh, well. I mean, who's counting? Yeah. Well, I think we'll be here for a little while. Like I said, we're going to go out later on this evening, probably to do for a About the nicest piece of scrap wood we got. <laughs> My stack is over there, honey. I'll hand them to you. Where's your knee pad? are watching. Nobody's watching. Oops, stepping on you. Ah. 
What do you do at your bathroom sink? I bet you don't use a chop saw. We're absolutely insane. <laughs> but we have a piece of drywall protecting the vanity top. Although someone's informed me she wants a bigger vanity top. Yep. And we say project creep. Project creep. Well, at least we're happy about it. What do you think? I don't know. Nope. There's not much to do right now. What you been doing? Mm, playing. Alright, all of the blocking is done. We have got it along the seam of what will be our plywood seam on the new floor. Then we have it done on the exterior wall where it meets the exterior wall. And we also put it on this side which again with a mobile home of this vintage they don't put your walls on top of any studs so this wall's floating and it's kind of sagged over the years so we braced it up forced it to our wheel as much as we were able to it's properly secure and ready to go so what do we get to do next next we're going to be adding in the insulation that's going to go right underneath the plywood it helped we've done it for like basically the rest of the house so we're going to go ahead and finish with our bedroom and just staple it down and then we'll be ready to put the plywood on top. Rock on. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> I was, was kind of watching to, the, well, I was waiting to the lip facial it. expression. I just, totally missed it. Let's try it again. <laughs> Let's go. Throughout this project, we have had a box fan going in our window. And for most people, you probably wouldn't give this a second thought, but we're out here, no power, no connection, 100% off the grid. So, how are we running a box fan? Well, you remember that little video that I did about a battery pack and charging your batteries? And yes, okay, it was a sellout video. Well, we're still using that little guy. It's great in this sense. Run a box fan, ventilate the house, charge some batteries charge some tablets for the boys. It's a nice practical real world use and really the reason that we sold out by doing that video so we could have it for this exact reason. We knew we'd be in this boat so here we are with that small paddle. Anyway back to the show. All right as I was doing that spiel about the fan I thought she stopped out of politeness. No the manual stapler quit working so we're going to use the electric one and the little battery box. Always. All right, let's go. You gotta give me enough room. I gotta follow you now. My buddy. <laughs> Well, dang. Well, no, it's going in. Well, yeah, but it's like 
That must be a lot more powerful than 500 watts. I'm still doing it. Okay. I mean, it beats what we don't have. I'm in Kanapa. We have come to the end of the workday for us. We have gotten the floor pulled up, the blocking done, and the insulation down, but we don't really want to handle some really heavy plywood right now, and it's the end of the day. Yeah, I mean, yeah. End of the day means you're done working. So that means that tomorrow, we get to start out by putting down some floor and making ourselves feel really good. We do. Wait, you don't feel good about what you did? I do, but right now I feel itchy. Well, you've been doing the insulation work. That being said, we are going to stop here with the video. We'd rather give you guys some content to watch and enjoy rather than just sitting on it like an Easter egg or something. And I don't know. Anyway, that'll be it for this uh, installment of Mobile Home Life. <laughs> Mobile Home Living. Well, that's actually the name of a magazine. I saw that. If you enjoyed this and you're curious to see how we continue on this road, definitely stick around. We obviously have a lot of work to do. We are not stopping anytime soon. Nope, we're not allowed to. So you'll want to join us and see what happens. See what this renovation becomes. Someone has been planning a lot of interesting stuff. Like, Really? I've, Who? You. You've been sending me like Pinterest pins over and over on the oh. color palettes. and. Yeah, I've been looking at colors and stuff. There you go. So. Well... If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Otherwise, we'll see you guys next time on the homestead. See you guys. Bye. Hey, it turned off. Welcome to Hometown on YouTube, aka Mobile Home Town. House, <laughs> charge some batteries, charge some tablets for the boys. It's a nice, practical, real world, real, real man. Well, we've reached that point where Sam fiddles with the camera. It automatically focuses on you. He likes it. All the time. You need some new deodorant. <laughs> it's the garlic supplement stuff. I don't know if it is. No, it is. I mean, that's like... Hey, I've never been able to knock paint off a school bus. <laughs> you have. I have not. No, mine's been working, though. This is the new condition. It's the health condition, okay? <laughs> Oh gosh, the camera's on. <laughs> I don't know if people pay enough to see that kind of stuff. Okay. Jeez. There's a floor. <laughs> What's your superpower? <laughs> gosh. So, once he was able to use the heft and brah, it came out easy. Thanks. <laughs> use the heft. We only have like Use what? the heft, really? Can we please okay. not give people ammo? Okay, um...